We used the first derivative test to describe where our function is increasing and decreasing without looking at the graph. The second derivative test, which will be very similar, describes the concavity of our graph. So a quick review of concavity, concave up, um, in its form, it looks like a parabola that opens upward. So like if it was raining, it would be something that holds water or gathers water. So notice that there's kind of two portions of this. There's the decreasing, decreasing portion and increasing portion. But really, we're focusing on kind of the curvature of it. But concave up would be where it switches from decreasing to increasing. And then um, concave down would be a, the shape of a parabola opening downwards. So with this, it would be like if it was raining, this would be like an umbrella. It's that it wouldn't gather any water. It actually kind of repels water in a way. But notice that this has increasing and decreasing to it as well. It just it goes from increasing to decreasing. So um, the order differs with um, increasing and decreasing. Uh, parabola that's opening upwards. So concave up goes decreasing to increasing and concave down is increasing to decreasing. So what we want to do is relate this concavity, so this kind of curvature of concave up, concave down, to our second derivative. Concave up shaping occurs where our second derivative is positive. And then concave down is occurring where our second derivative is negative. And as a refresher of what an inflection point is, that's where we switch concavity. So like this comes through nicely with our x cubed function, where we go, it's all increasing, it's increasing, increasing, but we do switch from concave down to concave up. And that point where we switch is the inflection point. So that's where we'll switch concavity. So our first example that we're going to be looking at is x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. I know the point of this will be that we don't look at the graphs, we just find everything algebraically. But to relate to this first example, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. So x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, we are decreasing until we reach 0, 0, and it flattens there, and then it decreases on to this local minimum at 3, negative 27, and then our function increases up. So we could use the first derivative test to describe where we're decreasing and increasing with this function using those critical values um, where the derivative would be 0. So that would be occurring at x equals 0 and x equals 3. But let's talk about concavity. This kind of beginning here, this curvature, is matching the parabola that opens upward. So this would be concave up. And then at 0, 0, it switches to concave down. So it's more opening downward. So that point, 0, 0, is going to be an inflection point because we're switching from concave up to concave down. And then it's concave down, concave down, until some point in here between 0 and 3. And typically, it's about halfway between. Our graph switches to concave up. So somewhere in here is an inflection point, probably about 1.5, but we'll look at solving for that, um, where we switch from concave down to concave up. And then our graph continues to be concave up. It doesn't switch again. So what we should be seeing with our second derivative test with this function is we'll see concave up then concave down, then concave up. So we should probably end up with three intervals with this one. All right, so the second derivative test. First thing we're going to do is locate the inflection points. So that's where our second derivative is equal to zero or undefined. With that, we can determine the intervals, and then we're going to select a test value from each interval. And with that, we'll evaluate the second derivative of those test values. And again, it's just a matter of positive or negative. Um, if our second derivative is positive, it's concave up. If it's negative, it's concave down. Um, and if it's a spot where the concavity changes, that's going to be an inflection point. So let's take a look at working with this x to the fourth minus 4x cubed algebraically. 
So if we want to evaluate where it's concave up and concave down, we're going to need the second derivative. So if f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, the first derivative is 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Second derivative is going to be 12x squared minus 24x. So we want to find our inflection points first, or where our function's undefined. So um, this is just a polynomial. It's going to be defined everywhere. So we don't need to worry about that. So all we're interested in is the inflection points. So 0 equals 12x squared minus 24x. So we want to see where our second derivative is equal to 0. Let's do some factoring. I'm going to factor out 12x, and that'll leave us with x minus 2. So, interesting. So, you know how I said I was expecting it to be about 1.5? It looks like it's going to be at x equals 2. So, we have 12x equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. So, we have inflection points at x equals 0 and x equals positive 2. So, with that, we're going to set up our intervals. So, we're going to have an interval from negative infinity to 0. We'll have an interval 0 to 2 and we'll have an interval 2 to infinity. All right, selecting our test values, let's see, negative infinity to 0, let's look at plugging in negative 1, 0 to 2, positive 1, 2 to infinity, let's plug in 3. All right, so those are the test values, and then I want to evaluate the second derivative at those points. So I want to use that 12x squared minus 24x, plugging in negative 1, 1, and 3. And again, I'm just interested in whether it's positive or negative. So let's see, 12 times negative 1 squared, which is just positive 1, minus 24 times negative 1, which is a plus 24. So that's a positive 36. But I'm just going to mark that that is positive. If I plug in positive 1, that's going to be 12 minus 24, which is a negative 12, so that's going to be negative. And then if we plug in a positive 3, so 12 times 9 minus 24 times 3 is a positive 36, so that's going to be positive. So what this tells me is where it's positive is concave up, and then where it's negative is concave down. So if we want the intervals, it is concave up from negative infinity to 0 and 2 to infinity. And it's concave down from 0 to 2. So let's take a look at this. If we go back to that graph, we have concave up from negative infinity to 0. Then we have that inflection point where our graph flattens and changes to concave down. What we were told is the function changes concavity at x equals 2, so there's this inflection point at x equals 2 here. So our graph stays concave down until x equals 2, and then it switches to concave up, starting at 2 and going off to positive infinity. All right, let's try a few more of these. So find the intervals where the function 1 over x minus 3 is concave up and concave down. So we have our original function is this, and I'm going to write it as x minus 3 in parentheses raised to the power of negative 1. And if I take the first derivative, so this would be using chain rule. So I'd have a negative 1 come out front times x minus 3, x minus 3 to the power of negative 1 minus 1, which is a negative 2. And then it would be times the derivative of x minus 3, which is just a positive 1. So we end up with a negative 1 times x minus 3 to the negative 2. The second derivative is going to come from, let's see, negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. And then we'll have x minus 3 in parentheses. Negative 2 minus 1 is a negative 3 which means we have, and then times the derivative of x minus 3, but that's just a positive 1. So this is 2 over quantity x minus 3 raised to a power of positive 3. 
Notice we're undefined at one location here. This is undefined at x equals positive 3. So we want to be careful of that and have that separate up our intervals. Um, if we try to see where our second derivative is equal to 0, so 0 equals 2 over x minus 3 cubed, if I multiply both sides by that x minus 3 cubed, it all wipes out. So there's no inflection points here um, that we're getting. So no inflection points, but we have that spot where we're undefined. So that positive 3 is going to separate up our intervals, so we'll have negative infinity to positive 3 and then 3 to positive infinity. All right, test values. Um, negative infinity to 3, let's plug in 0. Um, and then 3 to infinity, let's plug in 4. And let's see what happens to our second derivative at those points. So if I plug in 0, that's going to be 2 divided by 0 minus 3 cubed. So a negative 3 cubed. And that's going to be a negative value. If we plug in 4, that'll be 2 over 4 minus 3 cubed. 4 minus 3 is just a positive 1, so that's just going to be a positive 2. So we end up with negative infinity to positive 3 is concave down. Ooh, down. And from 3 to infinity, concave up. And with these, when you finish, go ahead and take a look at the graph, um, and you can check that that is in fact true. All right, one more here. We have big polynomial x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 30. So that's our original function. I'm just going to go ahead and do my derivatives over here. So f prime of x is 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Second derivative is a 6x minus 12. All right, so um, this is a linear function, so we're defined everywhere, but we can solve for where is the second derivative equal to 0. So 6x minus 12 equals 0. Add 12 to both sides. Divide by 6. So x equals 2 is going to be our inflection point. So our intervals, negative infinity to positive 2, 2 to positive infinity. For test values, let's use 0 in that first interval, 3 in that second interval. And let's evaluate each of those points um, with our second derivative. So 6 times 0 is 0 minus 12, so that's going to be negative. 6 times 3 is 18, minus 12 is going to be a positive 6. So negative infinity to positive 2 is concave down. And 2 to positive infinity is concave up. Again, with the second derivative test, we can get an idea of the shape of the graph of concave up, concave down, all algebraically without looking at the graph of the function itself.